Okay, this is Ike Willis and Bob Dobbs, uh, July 14, 2013. Okay, Ike. Yes, Bob. If you think of the exciting avant-garde imagery and arts of the 1920s, you probably think of painting, cubism, uh, suprematism, constructivism, data, surrealism, all these arts. We think back, it seems the eye seems to dominate in our thinking back to the 20s and 30s, or even the teens. When you come to the 60s, 50s, 60s, 70s, what is exciting and avant-garde and a, a, you know, a, an enthralling novelty? It's obviously music, right? That's probably the age of the ear. Yeah, yeah definitely, definitely. exactly. Now, you have painting as the eye, music as the ear. Those are two senses. What senses would come next? Probably the brain. Very good. And that's the... Probably the brain, because that seems to be... Because that's the, the, just the, what seems to be happening here uh, in the 21st century, especially the fact that I think that, that, that at least in, in the world, in the terms of what we're talking about, uh, there's there seems to be, right now in this country... There seems to be just a whole shitload of people who are, well, look, look, in America, they're still trying to get rid of racial prejudice. They're not having a good, they're not having a good success with it. Uh, they're trying to get rid of, basically, we're trying to, 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 to climb our, we're trying to climb our way out of all the mistakes of the last millennium, you know, in terms yeah. of wars. Genocides, uh, slavery, uh, uh, you know what I mean? Yep. And at the same time, art and music and things like that. And, and the thing is, all right, it's, it's like this Trayvon Martin case. That's a great example of that. And, and it has everything to do with race, and it's the biggest elephant in the room, and nobody said a damn thing about it. Okay. And, and, it's, and it's like we're trying to get out of the, the whole The whole point is the main, the only way, the only way to get to, to, to climb out of it. And the first the first thing to do and then Frank would say this too, uh the main thing is it's it's like, well the only reason that there's still trouble between you know, prejudice uh, racism and stuff between white people and black people is that they're they're approaching it from the wrong perspective. They're very, nobody's asking the right question. It's it's like well the only reason the only way there the the, the solution is very simple the only way that white people and black people are going to get start getting along and and, and, and racism stops is that you get that you have to start from the right premise and the right premise is white people don't consider black people people <laughs> see and that and see they're they're starting it they're, they you know they don't consider us people like human beings right and you know we're not we're not people to them. Okay, so, but Ike, now I want to bring in uh, what Frank, how I see a Frank in the big picture in this scenario I've laid out. You're right to right. say the brain. What sense is the brain? Well, I like McLuhan's definition. It's the tactile sense. If yes. you think of the tactile sense, it's not the sense of touch. It's the interplay. It's the rhythm. It's the thing that coordinates right. the different sensory data. So television right. was an extension of tactility, not oh, yeah. the eye, not the ear, but all the senses. Right. Because for many people with television, they could smell it as they watched the, the pictures, and it moves. So you got kine kinetics in there. Exactly. Exactly. Now America. And the brain processes. What? The process. All, the brain has the process since then, since the development of television, and then media to put on it. It's the brain that 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 has to interpret all that stuff. Okay. So here you have the eye, ver the eye beginning in the 20th century as radio, TV, and these electrical right. extensions of right. the mind. Right. Tactile exactly. media are the hidden ground. But because we right. were a literate, visually biased society in the 19th century based on books, we've, we were seeing the dying of our external senses, the eye and ear. So the first death was the supernova of the eye through art. Oh. Right? Okay, I get that. I get that. And then we have the supernova of the ear in the 60s. Mm -hmm. So the supernova of the last 20, 30 years is interactivity or tactile interplay. Okay, yeah, yeah. That's Everybody dancing with any media form that shows up, and it, it, the environments of it through the 
uh, your your iPhone's not shrinking the media more and more, and so that you get that, empowered to edit it. That's true, because because with the advent of computers and the internet and TV and visuals, okay, I gotcha. Yeah. All right. So in that mix, Frank starts starts as a kid drawing. I think he used to put on puppetry and he used to draw more than music. You, right. Exactly. Right. So he starts off acting out um, the 40s and 50s. He's got his eyes going. Then his ears get activated when he's 14. He starts composing, and he develops the uh, the uh, interest in the ear culture. Mm-hmm. But he's always looking at it visually. He's drawing. He likes drawing, uh, you know, musical yeah. notes and that. Okay. Mm-hmm. The next. Uh, so that's the 50s, 60s, 70s. So when when the Sinclair when the the Sinclair Vier comes in, there's Frank. He starts digitizing his music. And developing the tactility that was always in his music. So here's how it's tactile. Tactility is the interplay of the senses, not any particular sense in itself. You could say it's like the mind that organizes physical sensory data. So this interactivity of the tactile sense is touch, kinetic contact, and then letting go. Touch, let go. Touch, let go. Sex is a good example of a tactile operation. All the senses involved, and, and if you're doing it right, it's kind of an interactive, sensitive re- well, it is, call yeah. and response situation. Now, Frank comes in, in very quickly in the late 60s, holding up his hand. That's what tactility is, the extension of the hand. He's using right. hand signals, so he's implying tactility, not that he would come up with that term, but he's acting it out as a person, an artist, in touch with the, the rhythms of the present. And what does he play with? Rhythms. He creates right. a tactile, look at Lumpy Gravy. It's tactile interplay with speech and sound and cliches from the media landscape in an interplay that, for most people, still visually limited, visually biased, acoustically biased, find chaotic. That's certainly true. That's right. very, very true. So when, one of the main questions that I always get from people is that how on earth I can do that. Right, right. You See, that's why you're going to be able to fill in what I'm talking about here. So then to, just to finish it up here, once the digital comes in, since Frank was always miming tactile interplay with his audience, with the interviews, with the mediascape, he was a very interactive artist. You know what I mean? He, the audience and his response to the audience was more what Frank was about than any of the particular operations. Any of the exactly. particular technical stuff he was doing. Exactly, it was exactly. That's always true. watching to see what was going on. He wasn't presenting right. and, a package. And what was going to be the result of whatever small in the whatever small input that he added to it. Or right. Mm-hmm. All That's right. So this true. this tactile interplay with the Sinclair Vier in his digital studio, and remember he's always showing his hand in a lot of the pit of the album covers. The yep. big hand coming in, the image of tactility. So, ah, very good, Bob. Very good. Now, now I just now when now thinking back, yep, that's very true. Yeah. So when the uh, digital comes in, um, he can. I call that the Android meme. That's where technology comes alive. That's what we've actually listened. We've uh, watched the last 30 years where people's physical chemical bodies and sideline as they watch this digital uh, supernova of incredible technology just swamp over themselves and the economy. And Frank stays on top of it. He immediately in the 80s, right when it starts to become popular, he gets his digital instrument and he starts massaging anything, anytime, anywhere for no reason at all. Right. That is a definition of tactility. Tactility doesn't have a purpose. It's a sculpting. And the sculpture of tactility is what he and Don brought to pop music, the sculpture right. dynamic, which is a, a, the art version of tactility. So you have this incredible interactivity of Frank digitally, and, he's, and remember, wasn't it called Intercontinental Absurdities? Right, exactly. Programming the whole world as an art form. You know, he's right. the, he's the uh, comp- I call him a satellite conductor, operating from the satellite level, conducting the whole world. And well, I want to... Okay, so th- so I'm saying that Frank wasn't a musician sound guy. He wasn't an eye guy. He wasn't a dance guy. He incorporated those elements. He was a tactile artist. And right. This okay, ex- that makes very good sense. Yeah, this, this explains a lot of the details. So now, to end my point, let's go to the play, the, the opera. He never got off the ground, Dio Fa. 
because if you read his plan for that, it's such an amazing tactile enterprise. I've never heard of that. You never heard Explain. of Dio No. Okay, well, let me just read the entry on killuglyradio.com, give them a plug, you know, the uh, website. Uh, in, um, in the real Frank Zappa book, Zappa describes a proposal for a World Cup football opera. And this is a like... what? Say that again? <laughs> a World Cup football opera. Really? Yeah, called Dio, God, Fa, right. Lies. God Lies. And it's in the chapter... Uh, God Lies? Yeah, that's the title, D.O. You're kidding. <laughs> yeah. Now remember, he's th- he's being big. He's going to take on God in this tactile uh, environmental situation. Right. right. All right. So D.O. Wow. Uh, yeah. So this is in chapter 18, called the uh, the failure chapter. This is what really. Did. Yeah. So here's what it says. Frank Zappa would have proposed, if he'd given them the support, to write, produce, and direct a special entertainment event for the conclusion of the World Cup football finals in the summer of 1990. <laughs> in other words, like uh, the Super Bowl halftime show, he was going to be the end of the World Cup finals where everybody's going nuts, whoever won, and be the oh show God, for it. Are you kidding me? Yeah. That's insane. <laughs> Listen to this. And it would be well, when, did he come up, when did he come up with that? Hold on a second, Bob. Honey, I'm on the other line. Bob, long distance from Hawaii. I'm doing a, they're doing a, a, a thing for the, the uh, interview. I'll call you back. I'll call you back. All right, honey. Bye. That was Denise. All right. Wait, wait, wait. Now, when did this? When did he drop out of the? When, when did he do this? <laughs> this was scheduled for 1990, so he was thinking of it in the late 80s. Oh, uh, oh, oh my God! That must have been what he was. What we were gearing up for. At the time he got sick. Yeah. Uh, at the time he really, really started getting sick. In 89. Oh, I, he was. Right. He had this ready to go after. It was almost like he didn't mind the tour, 88 tour stopped. He had a big project coming up anyways. That's what he was talking about. And we never got to it because, you know, he started, he got sick. Secretly got sick. No one knew in 89, but he told you. Well, I did. Well, see, I did. And then, then, then that's when we moved to Portland. And then he then after we after I moved to Portland, that's when he called me and told me he was terminal. Okay, right. And he because he had and we stayed in touch during all that time, and he was having plans about. That's what he meant by because we were going to get back together, and it was going to dovetail with the 25th year anniversary of 200 motels, and we were going to get the orchestra, the London Symphony again. And all I get, and Flo and Eddie, and certain, and Vinny, and uh, all right for this big wor- for this big worldwide production, well, which he oh didn't tell God. you all the details. So let me give you the details. No, well, we never got we never got to all the details. Yeah, because he so. got involved with Russia in eighty nine and ninety. Right, and, and and also check that also Czechoslovakia with yes. Bob Hobble and those guys. Right. So listen to what he proposed. Uh, he oh proposed God. that this. That this thing be financed by the city of Milan and the Italian football committee. It would have been, right. an, I'm just reading from the, the text here, it would have been an opera with the premier performance in La Scala broadcast right. by. You, that, yeah, you tell me when you remember things. Like, oh, he said, like, you know, did you hear that word come up at some point in the conversation? Right. At in La Scala, broadcast via satellite worldwide. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh my God. So the the idea was to produce a script in English, Italian, German, French, Spanish, Portuguese, and Russian. The, mm-hmm. per, the performance would include dancing in many styles, many special effects, and a fashion show in the opera. <laughs> <laughs> wow. So listen to this; it gets even better. The musical company would include full orchestral settings chamber music settings, ethnic choral instrumental setting, executed by digital sampling and digital tape playback, right. advanced electronic music techniques and rock music in styles ranging from doo-wop vo- vocals to heavy metal. In other words, his whole career, his whole big note is what Pretty he was Pretty much, play. yeah. The music would be partly acoustic, partly amplified, and in some instances mimed to digital playback. See, acoustic, right. you know, acoustic would be the folky... Um, Painting period, the I period. Yeah, the gets, 60s. Yeah, and then the, then the amplification is the 60s and 70s. You know, that's the new right, uh, amplifier. Right, that's right. the ear part, the ear buzz. Right. And then the third phase, the title, the tactile is a digital playback. You mime to digital playback. Right. 
interactive right. digital involvement. So it says that Frank was to write the story and lyrics, supervise the set design, costumes, and special effects. The city of Milan, through its sister city arrangement with Chicago, would engage the Chicago Symphony to provide the orchestral backing. The right. La Scala Orchestra will be represented by selected instrumental solos. So you have some people from the La Scala Orchestra. The, Sc- right. the La Scala Chorus would be also featured. Zappa was to select the stage director, the orchestral conductor, and the featured vocal soloist. The, the negotiations for their fees would be the responsibility of the city of Milan. Their fees were not included in the proposal or budget. The, uh, he has here a U.S. designer and staging company would be selected by Zappa to prepare the blueprints for the sets and special effects. The sets would be constructed in Milan in the La Scala Scenic Facility under the supervision of the U.S. designer. The special effects would be constructed in the United States and shipped to Milan. Now comes a part that's italicized, and this is the story. Okay, This is the deal file. This is what it says. All right. What follows is not a complete description of the event, only a collection of ideas to begin with. All material is subject to irrational modification. Now, irrational modification is what tactility is. It sculpts the sensory data coming into the mind and sorts it according to whatever mysterious wills and agencies we have in ourselves, right? Our right. conscious and right. So right there, material is subject to irrational modification. Yes, tactility is not running. It's doing it for any reason or whatever that it knows. It's following its rules, all right? So there it is. He's saying right. it's a tactile response to a collection of uh, basically just a bunch of ideas to begin with. All right. The theme of the opera is, quote, millions of people believe football is God. But it is, uh. <laughs> but it is said, at least in Torino, God is a liar. That's the quote. Dio fa. Dio fa. To, to present this theme, we propose to use a large mechanical version of the marionette character shown in the logo of the Italian football committee. And that would be the football god. So you right. take the actual logo of the uh, the organization, and that right. would be the football god. This football god marionette. So there's Zappa getting his pup, his puppetry in there. Always you right. know his kid kid stuff. This football god marionette is afflicted with an uncontrollable nasal growth syndrome. Oh that's, no! <laughs> that's Ruben the Jets, 1968. Oh my God. <laughs> Conceptual continuity yes. strikes again. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. Continue. All right. And this would be pioneered by Pinocchio and perfected by Reagan. The nasal growth syndrome would be pioneered by Pinocchio. Wait, wait, wait. Uh, started by Pinocchio and what? And what's the next? Well, he has say? here. Maybe it's the football god. This football god, Marinette, is afflicted with an uncontrollable nasal growth syndrome, comma. Right. Pioneered by Pinocchio, perfected by Reagan, Ronald Reagan. Okay. There you go. There you go. All right. The lie. Right. Because whenever football God tells a lie, a horrible soft nose grows out of the soccer ball. Right. Which forms the head of the logo. With each new wow. lie with each new lie, another monk appears singing in Sardinian ethnic choral style, struggling to hold up the football god's repulsive nose with inexplicable religious machinery. Oh my God! <laughs> so oh the, my God! <laughs> so the nose. Grew, so that's the Pinocchio part. So the football right. god is Pinocchio at the beginning. To conclude the production in a way that allows football god to have a tiny nose and live happily ever after, we propose. Here's what the proposal is: as soon as the Italian national team is selected, a rock video is made in the style of the Super Bowl shuffle. Remember the shuffle and, and oh, of course, the Chicago Arrita? Bears. Yes. No, the Cletus Arridus are right. Oh, Cletus story. Arridus are right. Okay, yeah. yeah. Yeah, they perform a shuffle at the end of the story. Okay. Oh, that's right. Yeah, a rock video is made in the style of the Super Bowl shuffle using the players in uniform to render an Anglo Italian rap version of Michael Jackson's I'm Bad. So that's. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. So the rock video is made uh, uh, as soon as the team is selected. All right. This right. will be made into an instant hit. Okay, this is part of the opera. You right. make it an instant. I think he means all within the evening's performance. This will be made into an well, instant. Of course, hit. because it, it would be such such that such an event would yes. already be pre-announced. Yes. Worldwide yes. as a result of the World Cup, because that year's World Cup up a uh, 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 frenzy that goes on every four yes. years. Is going to be watched by every 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 country in the world and attended to, and 
that's going to be announced as that would be announced as a part of the World Cup ceremonies and the World Cup uh, thing. And of course, it would be an instant hit because there because it would be because already, everybody's tactile that they're going to make they're, right. They're going to make they're going and plus it's going to be a video. And you know and, and oh my God, <laughs> thereby <laughs> make thereby making it an instant hit. That's right. So, so it would be an instant hit simply because of what it is. That's right. Now, in the global theater, with satellites going around to start in the 60s, all the old media, television, magazines, books, newspapers, radio, TV, bulldozers, oil companies, they're all inside this theatrical thing that's no longer the global village, it's the global theater. And Frank, as a satellite conductor, is orchestrating a day in the life of the global theater. And he's showing exactly. how the collective and marketing that, okay. okay, and that, and that, that dovetails with his invention that he was patenting for us to not have to tour to be presented to 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 to, to telecast broadcast simulcast right our performances in 3D yes, to into avoid any the theater into any theater or any stage in the world now that directly coincides with that oh there, my god yeah when was he telling you that by the middle 80s 88 right does that include the news show with Dan Shore idea that he wanted to do yeah, yeah, the TV news. Yeah, because Daniel, because I mean, I was there when he when we when we when he met Daniel Shore. I was standing right next to him. Right, right. See, so this is this is an expansion of it. Uh, this is like a climactic one-time thing, and it's a big ad for Frank in the long run for his talk show. So the marketing of this, and everybody be all involved with it, that the whole absurdity would get the world audience who's listening more drunk on the whole thing, and they'd all start saying, yeah, this is an instant hit just for the hell of it. And that's a tactile interplay between the composer, artist, and the audience. See, it's more tactile. And, and the music industry and the entertainment industry. Yeah, yeah. Because the result, the result of, of saying, okay, it's going to, uh, one of the requirements being that it, that it be an instant hit, will involve the music industry and its machinery as a response, as a call response. That's right. Uh, uh, right. Tacticity wise, making the inter- the media entertainment uh, 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 machine a subset of the satellite conduction. A subset of the satellite conduction, making it an instant hit. Yeah, think and, of, the, and the process of it being an instant hit is also a part of the uh, or a part of him conducting. Yes. Holy shit. <laughs> And, and, and think of Theodore Bikel, the guy with the military suit. Oh, Theo Bikel. I love Theo Bikel. Yes. Remember him at 200 Motels. He's the military guy behind the scene playing with the double right. Frank. Uh, Rance Star. Mohamed. Well, Rance Fr- Mohamed. Yes. Ran- Frank is Rance Mohamed in this situation. Right. right. Orchestrating this whole global military operation. So right. It says, um, so this video is made an instant hit by all Italian radio and television stations. At the end of the opera, Football God sings his hit. Assisted by right. the, <laughs> I guess this hit that just happened, assisted right. by the monks who turn out to be Italian national team in disguise. So he's already brought the Italian national team into it. And, right. And, <clears throat> and so Frank writes by singing, "I'm bad, I'm bad, I'm bad, you know it, you know it." God's nose shrivels to Jacksonian proportions, and he dances away. All right, that's that wow. end of that phase. Wow. He, then he says, Dio Fa, the logo for the opera itself, as it would appear on posters and advertising, was to be licensed as part of the opera plot, and still part of the story, to a mysterious right. Soviet clothing designer. Here's his whole thing of helping Russia. You know what I mean? That he got right, into. right, right. It'd be a license to a mysterious Soviet clothing designer who plans to unveil the new line of Soviet fashions via satellite during of the course. most dramatic part of the opera. Right. So this oh, marketing God. is going to interrupt the opera, right? As part of the opera, and it it's said, a commercial. Yes, and so it right. says that FC would attempt to make an actual licensing and manufacturing deal with the Soviets for real clothes to be offered worldwide under the Diofa label, with the garments making their debut as part of a choreographed fashion show with ballet right. and ethnic dancers as models, and the Soviet designer appearing on stage to be to be hugged by them after the clothing is shown. So he's right. going to do, do a marketing thing right in the middle of the plot. <laughs> as a part of the plot. Yeah, as a part of the plot. Oh, my God. Now, listen to this. Other characters in the Diofa include Galileo, right. Te- Tesla. Of course. Newton. Da, Vin- right. da Vinci, Leonardo Da Vinci. Mussolini. Oh, Mussolini. Right. Hitler. Stalin. 
and Elvis Presley as the devil. Ha! Ha, 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 ha. Are you shitting me? <laughs> what? This is what's right here. This is what's written. And then it says, Great, Great Britain was to be represented by dancers dressed as football hooligans. So actually he's getting the Pope Catholics against the Protestant Queen in here. He's of course, of course. Yeah. So he's got, Great Britain was to be represented by dancers dressed as football hooligans, misinterpreting signals from the Queen. And the Queen is a waving mechanical cardboard arm viewed through the window of a passing car. So it's a wow. cardboard arm waving at the Queen. And they're, mis- right, right. they're misinterpreting the hand signals, that is conducting right. style. Right. As a political operation. See, this is, you know, people thought... And the conspiracy websites in you know, over the last 10, 15 years, they talk about, you know, George Bush comes out and he makes little signals to, to his Freemasonic buddies through the media with these, the color of his tie and all that. Well, this is what right. Frank is sort of bringing in that idea that the queen is orchestrating her, her empire with this waving hand. You know what I mean? This mechanical exactly, hand. Exactly. <laughs> which, is, which is basically all anybody ever sees of the queen. That's right. That she's riding by in her car. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Here's the final paragraph. America was, so you got Italy, Great Britain, and then America, which is a very tactile culture with so much electric media interplaying, it's, it's tactility itself. So it's in between the Protestants, the Catholics, so to speak, or, and their empires. America was to be represented by a group of tourists who line right. up the phone booth with a sign on it that reads, Talk to God. Right. And each tourist would get to ask a single question. The all-important questions are, one, did I wake you up? To God, you'd ask God. Great, right. great. Two, what time is it there? There's the <laughs> <laughs> Right, right. Frank, I always wanted to know what time it was. Uh, right. Three, how much is that in dollars? Right. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, my God. Fourth question, asking God, is that a castle or what? <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah. Fifth question: What's the weather like there? Exactly. Sixth and final oh. question, and the, and each caller gets to ask one of these, right? They get to choose from mm-hmm. these six, and the final one is: When are you coming to America? Right. <laughs> oh man, <laughs> that fucking brilliant. Yeah. Oh my god. That's what he was talking about. That's what he wanted to do. That'd be the final. Uh, right. You know, think of the football. A poli- in, they talk about the political football. An issue is a right, right. political football. It's a problem, right. you know. They kick it around. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, to me, that is a perfect expression of the tactile interplay of all the media environments orchestrated by, quote, the CIA, whoever manages the secret committee that has to sort of keep the big picture going and kill exactly. a few people if they get in the way or kill exactly. a few nations. That is right. what he's miming, and oh it be- and it begins with Elvis. See, wh- whoever is a big major major stream star like Michael Jackson or Elvis, they right. are miming right. in the popular tactile level the role of the CIA uh, orchestration of what I call the word that makes the market. Wow! Isn't that incredible? He has it all here. Oh my goodness! That's what he was. That's what he was. Okay, I got. What it. do you recall got- now? What are some Things you recall that fit bits in and, well, bits and pieces. See every every aspect of the play are the things that he was in the process of of, of actually doing because, and I think part of that was going to be the Thing Fish movie, right? Because right. when he was on his deathbed, he was in negotiations with Whoopi Goldberg, who wanted to buy the rights. To put, to put on because he wanted to put on Thingfish as a movie. She wanted to do as that. Well, yeah, with with because Whoopi Whoopi loved the loved the uh, the uh, the album and and and, and, and since the, we if we did we weren't able to to get it uh, staged on Broadway as a play. Right. And think about what happens in Thingfish, right? Yeah. And uh, and and all of and so that that dovetails with. With with uh, because we're doing a lot of we're doing a lot of hand signals and 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 de- because the Mammy nuns were the were the chorus line. You hear me? Yes, exactly. Yes, I know the what you Mammy mean. The Mammy nuns, the Mammy nuns were the chorus lines because they were going to be dancing all the all the way through the play. Right. 
So you see oh, that? So you goodness. see, Thinkfish is, is puny compared to this thing. Yeah, I know, but see, Thinkfish was just one part of. Yes, that's that, the same thing. The same thing. It was like the uh, the z z z. It was about the uh, market, the marketing of the biological virus known as known as AIDS. Whereas Frank and this DeFi is showing the larger marketing globally. Okay, and that was that was just that that was just a that. Oh my God! Oh my God! Yeah, DC, now oh. what he he's showing the the inter the seamless web of corporations and media and intelligence agencies and news agencies and the information environment. He's showing a seamless web around one event that is meant to trigger off all other kinds of marketing things. Right, right. And he's miming that, and he's he's okay. saying, "Let me be that. I will take my reality and do it, and show right. everybody this." Now, hey, Bob, now, Bob. I think my I think my 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 my, my handheld phone is about to die. Uh, let me hang this one up and call, can we we have to do this. We have to do we have to. We can it, do we part two. I will stop the recording and we'll do it again. I'll call the other number. All right, and I'll pick, and I'll pick, I'll pick yes, and I'll, and I'll, I'll, I'll pick up the other phone and, and so that I can reach uh, put this one on on, on the. Uh, on the on the hand on on the thing the charger and I'll have the other when you call back I'll have the other phone ready to go. All right. Well, actually, so you have to just see you can. All right. Let's just stop the recording. We'll do part two. Yeah. I'll stop this. Okay. Just a second. All right. All right. Go. Okay. This is part B of our talk with Ike on July fourteenth, two thousand thirteen. So, Ike, you just had your mind blown with this scenario. What comes to yeah. mind? Uh, what ideas and things you're familiar with? Well, like I, said, I was saying, this, what comes to what brings to mind is that six months, six to eight months before Frank died, um, he called me while I was still living in Portland and said that uh, this was in ninety or early ninety three, and told me that. You know, he was coming. He was. It seems like his cancer was. It was going into remission, and we'd be able to travel again and actually go back on the road. And he was throwing bits and pieces at me. Now I realize now of Dio Fa because he had always been saying that. Well, I want to go back out with the orchestra and essentially have a huge, a huge orchestra slash band doing a worldwide. A worldwide presentation that would ostensibly be the 25th year anniversary of 200 motels, but uh, but combined with his this new technology that he had just uh, secured a patent search for uh, with, with the Library of Congress, utilizing 3D technology so that instead of having to tour from city to city. We could put the whole thing in a sound stage, at least, at least our part of it, yeah. because this is also part of the president is his his, his running for president as well. Right. That um, we'd have the we'd have the symphony orchestra. We'd have an expanded version of the mothers, um, <clears throat> and to be able to use this technology to be able to, and it was and it was totally interactive in that. We would set we would set up the whole we'd set up the whole machinery in a movie soundstage, and then be able to broadcast it, simulcast it via via, via television and computer and internet into any venue in any city in the world, and adjust the size of the broadcast. Naturally, it's like on a, if it was on watching on a TV, we'd be in a, the size of a TV screen. But in a three in a theater, because of 3D technology. It would be the same size as the band would be on a forty by twenty nine foot stage. Wow! Like so, in other words, the t you wouldn't go to city city broadcast no, we, from this no, place. We'd, we'd, no, we'd be at home here in L A. Right, being televised by three D technology, so that if it's a small two hundred five hundred seater, you know, an old theater or a stadium, we could adjust the size of yeah. the broadcast of, of, of the of the Projection, so that you know, so that it would be you know with the, the, the we'd be the regular size of the size a band would be on a stage in a football stadium, a football stadium, Bob. Yeah, he would be saying that to you. you yeah, yeah, a football yeah. stadium. Okay, <laughs> and that that's the thing because uh, that, that's the thing. So now 
now that see that makes perfect sense because that would allow that would allow that that would that that would allow do five to actually happen. Yes, this because is it. during the World Cup, during the World Cup, using that technology, he'd be able to conduct and also and also we'd be able to participate in such a worldwide football game. Yeah. Fashion show, uh, uh, merchandise have, marketing, merchandise, merchandising, and and and, and, and oh my god! <laughs> so oh let, my god! Let me give you a couple of conceptual continuities. Um, he, when he was talking about running for president, he said he would just do interviews. He would just stay home and be available right. for interviews twenty four seven, and just run it from his home, talk and be right. interviewed. So there's the work coming. Digitally just coming from one place. He understood. Yes. Mark, Mark McClune used to say that's the way elections should have been run. Everybody could right. run the whole thing in the fucking the studio, you know, over right. six months or a year and, ha- and get rid of all this other physical body interaction that's stupid. That leads right. to uh, whatever, stupid stuff. So, Go, yes. Going, yeah. going around with handshaking and kissing babies yeah. and, yeah. and et cetera, et cetera. And they would just dialogue uh. casually and show their ability to respond to whatever was happening in the news. And that's how you'd figure out whether the guy was going to be a good president or not. Not trying to state exactly. some stupid opinion or policy. Exactly. Now, based on polls, right. based on polling, right. and, based, and based on just, just political footballs and buzzwords, and et cetera, et cetera. Right. So Frank had the right idea how to do it. Now, here's the other idea. Did you ever see The World's Greatest Sinner by Tim Carey? That yes. movie. Oh, oh, you mean Frank's movie? No, no. Tim the Carey. One, the, one that he did, the one that he did the movie. Uh, yes, the that's down for, for it. yes. No, I never saw. I never saw that movie. Okay, Tim Carey, who was this great actor for um, Stanley Kubrick movies, right. and a good friend of uh, John Cassavetes, used to be in, in a lot of his movies. Oh, I love John Cassavetes. Cassavetes was great. Right. So Tim Carey, here's he made this in 1963. You know when right. Frank is on Steve Allen, he mentions right. when he's playing the bicycle. He mentions the premiere. He says of the worst movie ever made or something like that. Okay. Right. 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 Which Tim Carey didn't like, but anyways, you can't control Frank, and he had his reasons for doing that. But the movie's about this, uh, I, I don't know if he's an insurance salesman or something, but he starts watching uh, the Elvis Presley kind of phenomenon. This is the mid-50s. It, it's being uh. filmed in the late 50s, early 60s. It takes several years for him to make it. So he's ta- he takes on the, this is the movie world of Tim Carey and his friend Jack Nicholson. Jack Nicholson later said it was his favorite movie of all time at the time it got shown in 63. And he said, this is my favorite movie. I don't know if he still would say it. But here's Tim with these actors, and they're watching this other kind of showbiz coming out of the radio called Rock and Roll, right? Right. And so, so Tim Carey, he decides, well, that's the way to get attention. So he becomes a rock, a rock and roller. He becomes so popular that he eventually starts a religion and declares war on God or something like that. Oh, wow. <laughs> the world's greatest sinner. And that's right. what that's the image of Elvis Presley as the devil is right, right from that movie, World's Greatest Sinner. And by the time the guy and by the time by the time Kerry creates his his own religion. Now results. he gets screwed. He gets screwed. Right. And what happens, he starts going around and ripping off old ladies. Uh, he screws all these old, ugly ladies to get their money right. or to invest and all that. So it leads into a terrible corruption. And I can't remember the exact ending, but I think it ends in tears, a tragedy. But the result, Dio Fa, God yes. lied. Yes. So, wow. Now, wow. when I talked to Frank after, you know, after he transitioned and I was talking to him through the medium, the Evergreens, I said, a lot of your conceptual continuity comes out of the world's greatest sinner, and he agreed, or the guy that was dead agreed. Anyway, right, right, right. So, and you can see it in this movie. Elvis is the devil. Pop right. culture is the devil. Look at the Pope hates Madonna and all this stuff. And then, sure, sure. And then, but then Frank shows how pop culture fits in with all the other corporations and the marketing and everything to seamless mm-hmm. web, and he shows it's a, not a global theater. It's a global membrane. Can we run from exactly. a studio? Which is always right. what Frank said. In some studio in Langley, Virginia, they're making exactly. a... Exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Top secret laboratory. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and he called his the Dr. Zircon's lab in Happy Valley. Wow. Think of Uncle Meat was a guy with a lab. With the, with the, sure, with the sure. jets and the nasal growth syndrome. Whatever exactly, it was. exactly. <laughs> so the whole thing. Wow. So... I, I recently, a friend of mine saw um, a Reich, well, it wasn't Nazi Reich, the uh, Philip Glass performance of something, some yes. big opus, yeah. 
and it was lousy and boring. And this right. is the point. Frank would be and could think beyond these guys because he didn't have the, the particularities of values of this is low culture, that's high culture. He put it all in the mix. And right. that, that's the way societies run today. That's a tactile society. Wow. But each particular media content has no meaning. It's, it's keeping the whole thing going right. and merging and intertwining and the secret lab orchestrates the whole thing. That's what Frank which, understood. Which, 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 really, which really hits to the heart of Frank's, the one thing that Frank was, is, was always really brilliant at is long-term thinking. Yes. He who, could, who are the brain I mean, police? Who are the, yeah, brain, who are the police? brain police? Right, right. Long, just super, super long-term thinking. Holy shit. I mean, and being able to incorporate all of that and juggle all of those balls simultaneously. And oh, notice, and, and like you said, he'd have scientific magazines in his studio there. He'd be up on the latest technology. And you're saying that he invented a patent or he wanted to patent the process of putting everything together? No, it's his, it's idea. It's his idea. Wow. It's his idea. I mean, the thing is, using what he knew about the technology, because remember, Frank was a very brilliant guy. Yeah. And he always was. He was always up to up to speed with all the, the new tech, what the latest technologies, and everything that every new thing that came out. The manufacturers would always send Frank a, a, a prototype, so he could, so Frank could actually troubleshoot it and beta test it. He always was. He always he had the first synthesizers, the first amps, the first um, the the first um, digital synthesizers, polyphonic synthesizers, the Synclav. I mean, he owned the first one. Yeah. Of two. Yeah, because. We were in the we were in the studio doing Thingfish when the Sin Clavier people sent him a couple of Sin Clavs to troubleshoot and to beta test and to get the and to work the bugs out of it. Now, did so, he have other industries sending him other things? I think so. I mean, because I would see I would be up at the house and I'd see things that I'd shit that I'd never seen machines <laughs> yeah. that I'd never seen that I'd never seen before. Yeah. He goes and he would say, "Oh yeah, that's a so and so, and they're made by so and so, and it, it's supposed to do this, this, and this." A lot of the stuff didn't. Some of the stuff didn't work because it the the, the it didn't go far enough, or right. you know what I mean. It, it didn't do it, it quite everything that it was supposed to do. But you know, the thing is, he still used he still used certain things. And and also, but the, the the bottom line, he knew how it he knew how it worked in terms of technology. He could understand and, it, and he could improvise on it. Or make and a he patent of well, it. That, which is what he would do. He would take the best out of whatever he was testing, report back to these guys, and say, "Okay, well, this works. I don't like this. Blah blah blah." Right. Now yeah. this. Sorry, it doesn't do without. It doesn't go far enough, and it doesn't it doesn't get the exact results. That you're, either you or I aren't looking for. Right. You and I aren't looking for. But keep trying because all you need to do is this, this, this. How? Why don't you make it do this, this or that? You know what I mean? And it, it, that's that, that's how Frank was because I, I, there's always been, there was always things, boxes with tubes and knobs, and <laughs> made by ver- various corporations and stuff, but various companies. But he all. I, I, as long as I'd always been, I'd go, I'd go up to the house. We'd either be recording or sitting up there talking, or, or whatever, or be up there late at night working on projects. And the, the studio and the house is was just full of this shit. Right, and books and stuff and manuals. Oh, so of course, books everywhere. Okay, you so know? Look, you take that famous play uh, in the eighties. It's called Einstein on the Beach. Maybe it's the seventies. You see, a playwright is dealing with old visual culture. Uh, painting, right. uh, book stuff, the Shakespeare plays. Right. Just, okay, but Frank, Frank was, was in play, the... Frank was certainly a, play, a playwright as well. Right, but because he was dealing, he was the, the a chief focal point in the, the newest, greatest art form, rock music, right. amplified music. Right. You, you know, these other playwrights, they couldn't do that. But he could take no. that thing, because that actually, rock music was the iconography and the drama in the global theater anyways. It already was a theater. And Frank became an I and Frank back in the sixties became an icon. Right. Because and that a was, devil. Because a that's devil. a part of the that's a part of the game plan. That's right. He was he was considered a devil by the right wing and all this stuff. Oh, always. To this day he's considered the devil. Right. So you see that 
this play is a play, this Gifa is about himself and his process of taking the latest technology, and if given the opportunity, he would have done this, and he already was doing it on a small scale in his thinking sure. and what he was trying to say in his lyrics and, and conceptual stuff in his books. And he'd been doing it, he'd been doing it at least up until the time he died. So far, he had put in 30 years. Yes, yeah, 63, okay. By the time, 63. Yeah, yeah. To ninety three. Ninety three. He had been he had put together a good thirty years. I was with him almost twenty years of that. Okay, right. so uh, ha ha ha. Okay, now see I'm 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 seeing see see as 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 we're talking, little bits and pieces yes, that's what I want, are falling in there. Oh oh my god. And I was and I was there. Yes, okay. that's why as this a is part, uh, as a part of this. Okay. Okay, so then you have Francesco Zappa According to the dictionary, eight and seventeen sixty three to seventeen eighty eight, the same yes. period of recording, yeah. exactly yeah. same years. Because yeah, because when he told me, because he called me and told me he found Francesco, you know, just just in in, in his reading. Well, and Gail, he says Gail so. found it. He, he just, he yeah, well, they just, she found she found the, the the reference to him, right? And then Gail, and then Frank, of course, dove right into yeah. it. Got all the history. <laughs> got all the who 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 his uh, who his sponsors were. What what time frame? What kind of music? Uh, he had Gail get the charts. Uh, had to find to, to search yeah. for the charts and stuff like that. Yeah, I was up at the house. I was up at the house with uh, doing during during that whole thing. And you know, he showed me the charts. And he showed me Francesco's history, uh, 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 just the whole shot. Now, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, was, I was there. I was All right, there. that's good. Now, the um, uh, the year 1990 for this, you know this is Frank just coming up with another great show, this should be Dynamite Show, Barry, for him launching his presidential campaign. Right. This would be his, his political commercial. Right. He says on Freako, one particular song is a body commercial to get more groupies or something, one of the songs right. in the liner notes. But you see, the whole process of what he was all about, he was the only artist, uh, creator, thinking like the CIA, like uh, marketing, like advertising, like the industry, like um, great works of aesthetic appeal, you know, his, his own composition. The whole mixed bag, he's the only one thinking on that huge scale. Right, that's what I mean. That's in why he's the best long, artist. Right, that's in terms of his long-term approach. And, yeah, yeah, that's in terms of his long-term thinking approach and planning. Because, that, see, that's the key, Those are the long-term planning. Yes, and remember, and to, remember in, the, in the circular for the Warner exec, hey, snazzy exec, uh, something 1971, where he lays right. out the conceptual continuity of the band and why he's not a normal band, and he talks about the long-range pan- plans, and he talks about a town, and everything's orchestrated in the town, and then there's these little pins that are out in the Atlantic Ocean, there's millions of them, and there's one little pin that has a gesture from a studio in it. Do you remember that whole scenario? I could actually go read it, but it's, it's quite well known among the Zappa files. This scenario of planning and sculpting. He talks about sculpting earth environments and all kinds of things. That was in 1970. Really? Oh, if you haven't, let me uh, uh, go down and bring that up. I mean, it's, a, it's an incredible, but it's the long-term plan that you're talking about. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Yeah, that's him. That, yeah, yeah, because... We would sit and talk, and he would. Let me think here. Let me think here. Because we would think about in terms of planetary, in terms of sculpting and planetary sculpting. We were in Germany one night, and we're. It was like past show after the show and stuff. And he goes, you know, at this part of Germany, he goes, I, you know, you're you're in history and you're in the geology and stuff. And he was saying, what well, did you know that Germany? What what now? What, what we know is Germany. This actually used to be Sweden. Yeah, he said. Who's he saying this to? A journalist? Me. Oh, yeah, that's right. Me. Yeah, that's, yeah. He goes. He goes. Yeah, this used to be. This was actually Sweden. You know, uh, at, at, at uh, uh, starting. You know, when when you when European society was was up and running and stuff like that, because they've always been fighting back and forth and 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 various wars and things things like that and 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 kingdoms and and and, and you know. And, and who's in charge here and there over the years? That at one point in time, this is this was Sweden. 
until the until the Germans, the Vandals, the whatever at the time, finally finally drove them northward to where they are now. And you know, it, 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 basically, it all boils down to well. The, the bottom line is that well, that's a part of that 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 uh, political and ge- geopolitical and, and sculpture. Yes, you know. See, watching, look at the. See, when you look on the map, you'll see the the the, the boundary lines are drawn up a certain way. But of course, you know there there aren't lines on the actual ground. But this you know this used to be Sweden, that used to be Russia. This and that because I'm totally into that thing. I'm a I'm a map reader. I love maps. I've always loved geology and geography. Well, yeah, that, that's course, why there's so many animosities in Europe. Because right, of course. Of you course. take the country of Prussia with Bismarck. That's not there right. anymore. But it was a big it's country in the 19th century. Exactly, exactly. But this is this is what I'm saying. Frank, see, Frank knew that about me. Okay. He knew that about me. See, because you know, because I'm the only one in the band who always had a book in my hand. Right. You know, I'm all, you know, I'm always reading. I'm always, you know, and and we would discuss. See, that's the thing. I could discuss anything with Frank. We would we would talk geology. We would talk geography and science and politics and music and religion. And and then then but the thing is, whenever we have our conversations, it was all part. Of the same ball of wax. Yeah, you you were the Pauline butcher of the mothers. He liked literate people. He liked people yeah. who read and could think. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And that's how that that's what we would talk about. That that you know that's why he would he, he kept me there. You know what I mean? That, right. That's that's why you know things like Joe and Thingfish and and Hunch and Toot and all that stuff was were were, were evolving. And he'd go, Ike, here's here, have a seat. This is what I'm thinking. <laughs> you know, uh, how would you like to be? Okay, look, I've got this character. Okay, or actually, no, no, he would just actually he wouldn't even, he wouldn't say I've got this character. He'd just bring in sheets of paper, right? And then I'd be uh, I'd be the person doing it. You know, he'd say, "Here, I you rehearse it." Yeah, he'd yeah, it yeah, we we just start we just start rehearsing it. We actually we just start performing it, and and then okay here's uh, sorry, when we get to this part stop here, and then we develop the music around it, and then keep on and then just keep going. You know? All right. And then it then it would end up being Joe or Thingfish or Hunch and Tooth. That's right. Or whatever. Yeah. See, see, literate people have ideas. He, he would need to bounce. He's got ideas automatically, but he needs someone else who uh, could respond or had ideas of her own to say to that him would, that he could bounce that off would, of. So that here's, would be me. That's right. So listen to this. This is um, a Warner promo circular from 1971, and it's called, In Case You've Never Heard of Our Group. So it's a letter to the Warner executives. Hey, promote us a little more. So I won't do the, inter, the introduction part, but he has the executive asking questions. What's so special about this group? And Frank says, perhaps the most unique aspect of the mother's work is the, is the conceptual continuity of the group's now, this is italicized. Output macrostructure. See, that's your long-range thinking. Output wow. macrostructure. Right, right. Makes and he sense. says, there, there is and always has been a conscious control of thematic and structural elements f- flowing through each album, live performance, and interview. See, tactility is not just making albums. It's not just live performance. It's the talking. It's the ads. The whole thing right. Is, right. Uh, is what he's wor- He's an artist of all media. In all categories. Right. So then he says to the guy, in about 1970, Earthworks were starting, were starting to become known. So he says, do you, know, do you know about Earthworks, says Frank? Imagine the decades and the pile of stuff on them subjected to extensive, long-range conceptual landscape modification. There's your geology. Yes. He says, houses, offices, people live there and work there. Right. They even make movies there. Imagine that right. you could be living there and working there and not even know it. He's talking about the right. invisible environment of the global theater. Right. Exactly, exactly. And he says, whether you can imagine or not, that's what my deal is. That's what the deal is. So he said, this is what's special about our group. This is the way we're thinking. So the executive response, Frank you know, makes this up, and he has the executive saying, listen, nobody puts together a pop group simultaneously planning years of absurdly complicated events lives out those events, then writes about it in a press kit and expects somebody to believe it. You're nuts. Right. <laughs> That's the response. Wow. So wow. Frank says, 
he just continues explaining. He says, the basic blueprints were executed in 1962 to 63. Preliminary experimentation in early and mid-1964. So he's speaking as Uncle Meat molding the room and the jets, which is the early mothers, right? Right. It's right. autobiographical. Construction of the project object began in late 1964. Work is still in progress. Right. <laughs> this is six years later, seven years later. And then the guy says, the executive says, no wonder you guys never had a hit signal. <laughs> right. And then Frank says, I'm sure you realize that total control is neither possible nor desirable. It takes the fun out of it. The project object contains plans and non-plans, always the dialectic, but the dialectic is the content of the tactile molding, of the sculpting, because the tactile molder is a non-entity. It's a, it's a, it's a mind manipulating anything that's going on, recording what's ever going on. Do you see what I mean? It's plans yeah. and non-plans, allowing unforeseen things to happen. So the project object, it's project slash object, contains yeah, yeah, plans. Yeah, of course, of course. Plans in the oh yeah you were called that <laughs> this is your baby right? That's the project right. object contains plans and non plans also precisely calculated event structures so that's like a, a world right 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 designed to accommodate the mechanics of fate and all bonus statistical improbabilities attended there too exactly exactly <laughs> so it, it takes it it, it, it 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 he left enough room to uh, to accommodate. Uh, Anything, anywhere, that, anytime uh, that, that happens. For no reason at all. For exactly. no reason at all. Any kind of stimulus, any kind of political, religious, musical, technological, uh, invention, spiritual, right? religious, yeah, spiritual right. upheavals or non heavals. Right. And whatever stimuli that that just happens to come along at the time, the 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 concept. The project object can in, can assimilate incorporate it, like to, like the well, or, it, like the organizing function of the brain. exactly like the exactly. brain organizing whatever right. happening. Remember in two hundred motels, there's a disaster in Atlantic City, New Jersey. Yeah, exactly. exactly. <laughs> okay, so uh, the point is, he is not in. This is why. Um, he has Ringo Starr playing him, or the other right. people. There's no Frank Zappa here. It's no, the no, hand. no, 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 no. It's the hand and that is Frank. Yeah, right. And remember, right. in Zemmerus, when Moon comes up, the daughter comes up and speaks to the, her father. The father is not identified. Says some no, things, it's, but, it's, it's, but it's, it's the invisible tactile modulator, satellite conductor. You see? Yeah, it's the it, 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 it's the the potholder glove. Yeah, it, it's almost. Did you say claws? Potholder. Uh, no, no, no. The it, potholder it, it, glove. It, 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 the glove. The glove. Yes, yeah, yeah. That, that's the extension of the hand, the green the, glove. The, 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 mit, the mitten the, on the cover of them or us. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Sure. See, that's an extension, and that's the one he highlights. That's the sense he highlights, his hand. Yeah. Because that's the tactile sense. I mean, right. the hand is the closest to what the brain does in organizing yeah. and manipulating. In, in a, in, exactly. And, oh, definitely. Right. So, so then the guy, after he says... Um, the mechanics of fate, there's inevitable stuff coming, but also weird improbabilities that come out of it in the middle. So they're a sure. mixture of determined and non-determined from a third position. Exactly. Right? An invisible position. Right. It's almost like, Frank, I, when I uh, did a uh, dialogue with Tommy Myers, I said it was like working with a general, and he says exactly. It's almost like yeah. Frank included... He being the he was a conspiracy within the band. Nobody oh, he's like Charlie's angel. Nobody knows who Charlie is. You see what I'm saying? Right. All right. So um, uh, he says. Uh, so the executive, when he hears that sentence, he goes, "Yeah, sure. I'm supposed to sell records for you guys, and I'm a little pressed for time. So why don't you just tell me normal stuff, like what's your group, what your group sounds like, maybe?" So Frank says. <laughs> What we sound like is more than what we sound like. There it is right there. See, it's not wow. the sound. It's the invisible, inaudible, tactile interplay of everything. Right. What we it's sound the, like... Other words, it's the, what, what we sound like is, is the result of what we start sounding like. Yeah. Or, well, or what, what we started sound. what you think we sound like, we actually the result of our effect on the outside stimuli. Ba and, and response then, to our predetermined and, and plans and non-plans exactly, that organized exactly. eight years ago. <laughs> exactly. And, and well, course, so, so in other words, and it was, so in other words, we were we are actually a result. Yes. And which, which changes on a day on a nightly basis. That's right. It, of and, what it, went before. 
he says he's a journalist. I'm studying the effects of the news events. He does a lot in my uh, dialogue with him where he explains how he watches all the different stations, gets different points of view of what's going yep. on, you know, always yep. invisibly orchestrating and, and yep. creating a new pattern. So he says, what we sound like is more than what we sound... I'll do that again. What we sound like, it says that. It got the wrong letter, but what we sound like is more than what we sound like. We right. are part, just what you were just saying, we are part, an extension of the project object. Not, we right. are not the only, the whole thing. We're just part of it. The project object, maybe you like event slash organism better, incorporates any available visual medium, any available visual medium, consciousness right. of all participants, including audience. It's almost like ESP, consciousness of all participants, or at least knowing their cliche responses. So he's including the tactile response of the audience. All perceptual deficiencies. Look at that. He's including perceptual deficiencies, not perceptual oh. excellencies, deficiencies. Right. And then he has the final, no, the second last thing is God in brackets is energy. So he's including God. He's, he's right. consuming God. And then he has bigger than God, the big note. And he says that's the universal basic building material. And then he goes, right. and other things. <laughs> After saying all these big things, he just uh, said other things. And other things. <laughs> and we make a special art in an environment hostile to dreamers. So then the guy says, I still don't get it. Art, what art? Rolling Stone magazine and all other groovy, important publications have convinced me that you guys are nothing more than a bunch of tone-deaf perverts. He almost right. predicted the perceptual deficiency. <laughs> sure. Tone deaf perverts faking it on the fringe of the real rock and roll world. All you guys do right. is play comedy music. So I should believe this crap about a conceptual program spanning decades? Frank says, right. yeah. He just, Frank quietly says, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and, and then the executive says, You've been doing this stuff for seven years? And then Frank says, Almost ten years if you include pre planning. Wow. Pre planning. That would be wow. the accidental meeting of people like Don Preston and, and the luck of meeting Tim Carey and in retrospect realizing how he can use all that stuff. He didn't meet, plan on meeting Tim Carey, but then he gets right. involved with the world's greatest center, and that becomes a, a, a basic metaphor for what he wants to develop. You see, right. includes pre-planning. So then, then the guy says, so why didn't I ever know about any of this stuff? I'm aware and intelligent and everything. How come you never mentioned it? And Frank says, there are several possible reasons. One, maybe you never asked because you never heard any of the albums, so perhaps the long-range continuity would not occur to you. Or, right. two, or two, maybe you never asked because you never saw the mothers perform live, and the conceptual aspects of this phase, of this phase, many phases to come, could not right. be described without you having seen many concerts. Or right. three, maybe you never read any interviews where this phenomenon was briefly described, producing varying, varying degrees of semantic confusion <laughs> in his interviews. Wow. Or four, Maybe now is when you should know. There's Frank bringing him into the plan. All right, you, you should know now, not before. It's a need-to-know basis. So he's talking like a, a CIA guy here. Maybe now is when you should know. So then the guy says, uh, what is it, like a plot or something? Not uh, exactly. Uh, uh, <laughs> like wow. a, a conspiracy. He goes, not exactly. What I'm trying to describe is the type of attention given to each lyric, melody, arrangement, improvisation, the sequence of these elements in an album, the cover art, which is an extension of the musical material, the choice of what is recorded, released, and or performed during a concert, the continuity or contrast of material, album to album, etc., etc., etc. All of these detail aspects are part of the big structure or the main body of work. It's all capitalized. Right. The main body of work. The smaller details comprise not only the contents of the main body of work, but because of the chronology of execution, give it, an, give it a shape in an abstract sense. See, that's what tactility sculpts. It sculpts the data into an abstract shape, which you perceive right. as consciousness. Right. So the guy says, so you say you're aware of the overall shape of the group's output so far? He says, I say we're not only aware of it, we control it. Right. <laughs> It is an intentional, yeah. It is an an intentional design, and then, right. he, then the guy says, "You think this makes the mothers better than some other group?" Frank says, "It makes the mothers different. Certainly, we don't we do not claim that control of conceptual continuity automatically ensures superiority on any level." Right. The guy goes, "What?" Then Frank says, "Exactly, exactly. <laughs> what?" <laughs> Exactly. Yeah, and, 
and he, so Frank says, this is a silly analogy, however, here goes. He says, imagine the head of a pin. On the head of this pin is an amazingly detailed illustration of some sort. It might be a little thought or a feeling or perhaps an obscure symbol. It might just be a picture of a sky or something with birds in it, but it's on the head of this pin, remember, and it's infinitely detailed. Now imagine this pin is not a pin. It's a musical note with a corresponding physical action, like the secret raising of an eyebrow to add special emphasis. Even in a recording studio where nobody can see you. That's where this is happening. It's invisible. Now, imagine enough of these abstract it's, pins. It's, it's, inv- it's invisible because it's on the head of this pin. Right, but it's also you happening. Can't see, you can't see the head of a pin because it's pretty much almost on a molecular level. Right, but it, the pin is a musical note with a corresponding physical action, but you can't a, see the physical action that goes with the note, which is the pin. That's what because that, 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 that takes place on a subatomic level. Yes, that, that's Mumesons, which he has in... Uncle Meat and, and all the subatomic right. metaphors he puts in there. Toads of the Short Forest. and there's, I think he told Simon uh, Prentice that Toads of the, of the Short Forest refers to isotopes. Wow. And, and Simon okay. was thrown with this. What the hell? But when you understand he's operating in all levels as a scientist, a comedian, as a physicist, the whole right. thing. He's doing everything, right. all knowledge. Because he's the son of a physicist, after all. Yeah. And so he's a nuclear physicist, after all. And it's a movie uh, uh, based on what? People who aren't normal? (laughs) Uh, 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 Oh, man. Oh, man. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Isn't this fun? Just to to review what he did is so much fun because you can, in dialogue, you get to hear it. You get to resonate with it. So he says, here's the important point. The gesture that accompanies the note, which is the uh, tiny pin, is in a recording studio, studio where nobody can see you. See, there's more invisible, inaudible tactility. You well, see? sure. As well, but you have to keep going further into. Yeah. In other words, in other words, in other words, you you break out your electron microscope because you have to go keep going further into and and back. And the illusion of that. Frank is satirizing yeah. all that whole scientific right. search. Oh, of course, of course. You know, there's there's a uh, a great uh, in Zap Comics by R. Crumb in the, in the first couple of issues. There's a it came out in the collective thing called Head Comics in the late '60s, where this scientist is looking through his microscope and he sees it. He finds the 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 basis of life and everything, and he starts running around. I found it! I found it! And then the comic ends with a bunch of men in white suits carting them off to the mental hospital. <laughs> of course. Yeah, I remember that. I remember that. Right. Now, I bring that up because in August 69, Zappa was interviewed by the L.A. Free Press, and Art Conklin, I think his name was, his first question, he says, I see you kind of like Zap comics. And he goes, exactly. I, I, I'd agree with that. So there's the comic stuff. There's the Zap. There's these metaphors that Crumb was coming up. Zap is incorporating that and developed them into a larger... See, Frank was the manager of the whole scene. He was the one sure. who, who, like the CEO, who had the big picture, right? Okay, you guys, right. everybody does this. Stuff, and he gets looks, surveys everything, all the arts. You know, Pauline uh, Oliveri checking out everything. Her, her piece that he uses, talks about in my interview, is really important. Uh, the upper and below invisible, uh, inaudible, up and below audible comes together right. in a middle zone where this mash is, but we don't see the inaudible. And when the inaudible above or below... It cross vibrates into the mish, middle mash. That could be right. a UFO or some psychic phenomenon. Sure, something it, trans, it translates from. Well, now we're talking about a subatomic and interdimensional. Yes, world. yeah. So it translates into our reality, thereby becoming visible for for X amount of seconds or minutes of time as it traverses from one from up, uh, inaudible to up audible translating vibrationally through this, our particular mashup in the middle. And frequencies, right. And that is, uh, he's, he's got it down better than Philip K. Dick did in, yeah, in, that, in all his novels. Wow. Okay, so uh, so in this recording studio where nobody can see you is this pin. He says, now imagine enough of these abstracted pins with the needle part chopped off the same space, so it's just the little head, right, it's even tinier, Wow. Uh, to fill an area as large as the North American continent and most of Central Europe, piled to a depth of 80 feet. Wow. 80 feet over thousands of square miles with these little tiny pinheads. Now, that's that's like a, a, an ice age image of snow all over the planet or something, right? He's sure. Saying, so, so he's saying, now imagine this. He's telling the, the absurdity. He's telling the executive. 
<laughs> about what his group's about, and he's trying to get him to imagine this huge uh, layer 80 feet deep. He says, now, imagine this area is not geometric space. That means visual Euclidean space. It's not limited to the literary space. It's more, it's tactile spaces. He says, imagine, a now look at this. What is the space made up of? A collection of decades. It's time. Wow. It's what are decades? That would be media content. You know what I mean? Well, just, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. In other words, in other words, um, an archive. An archive. Okay. His yeah, vault. Yeah, yeah, yeah. His vault. Yeah. Imagine uh, it's a collection of decades. This space, and he says in brackets, the exact number to be disclosed eventually. <laughs> in other words, wow. he's still working uh, on it, or he knows the exact number of decades. Eventually. <laughs> right. And so then, in the interview, he writes. The word pause. He says, pause. <laughs> so he's wow. saying to the guy reading it, pause. And then he says, the reason for explaining this process is to simply, is to simply let you know it exists and to give you right. as an executive some criteria by which to rationally judge what we do. It is not fair to our group to review detailed aspects of our work without considering the placement of a detail in the larger structure or wow. the long-range thinking. And then he, the guy says, why don't you guys just play rock and roll like everybody else and forget all this other crap? And he says, sometimes we do play rock and roll like everybody else. And then he puts a bracket, right. sort of. Our basic, <laughs> <laughs> right, our, basic, right. yeah, our basic stylistic determination is rock. Only sometimes it gets extrapolated into curious realms, which is every yeah. other thing we've been talking about. I remember the phrase curious realms. Yes. Yeah. Okay. You see? I remember that phrase very well. <laughs> what, he would say it occasionally to you, you mean? Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, he would say, yes, 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 he would. And see, this oh. would, and this is, the, the curious realms are the satellite conductors, tactile-wise, modulating all these realms, you know, that, it's not just right. sound, it's not just rock. Right, exactly, because as long as I was with him, it was, well, I'd never considered us a rock band. Right. I you never considered us a rock band because there was way too much stuff going on in there. <laughs> yeah, you guys were I an was, orchestra. I was doing well basically just I'm just speaking from just me myself. Yeah. I was doing way many things to be in just a rock band. I was doing a whole bunch he had me doing so many different things. Nah, that wasn't. You that were a playwright. You were an actor in a theatrical performance. I was an, an, I was an actor and a, and a, and 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 an, and an author as well because Frank basically pushed me to help develop. Yeah. What he had, he had initially uh, ostensibly had me go up and perform. Well, that's tactility. Studio. That his what his group okay? members had attacked our relationship to him. He'd take their t remember some of them would complain. The early mothers, oh, he ripped us off. Yeah, yeah. He'd say, they'd say Frank would steal. He'll steal anything. <laughs> but it was a tactile interplay uh, uh, with right. you and his mind and your mind and all that and your talents. Well, so, that's the thing, so. and yeah, because essentially my job would be to take this little sheet of scrap paper and 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 and, and basically. Initially, it would be all right. It, there'd be a, there'd be a couple of verses or a couple a couple stanzas, okay. And then he would hand it to me and give me my initial my initial chords, a couple of chords, a couple of a, a couple of single note lines. You would write that a, down. You'd write that down. And a chorus. Well, no, I mean he would he would he would write down so he would write down a couple of. Uh, a, Two chords, so two verses. Right. You know, four lines here, four lines there, with a cor with a chorus. Maybe, some maybe a chorus. Right. Sometimes the chorus hadn't existed yet, and <clears throat> but he would hand me so far what we're thinking. Okay, that's how that's like Joe's Garage. That's how Catholic Girl. Right. That's how most of the time the songs that you ended up hearing me singing, starting with Joe's Garage. Now he would hand me that and say, okay, sing this and this. Sing this line first, then let the music go by, or or or, or the, the next part, or stop there, and then come back in with the second line over here when we get to this point, okay? Yeah. And then they say, um, in the middle, and there's a, well, when we get there, just either hold off there or see. I have this habit of I would like hum or do like a verbal or, or verbal phrase. Or, or, or just 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 singing along to myself, 
or along with, uh, with with the music because it sounded so great and it was so new. And he'd go, keep that. I like that. Sell that tune. Sell okay. that tune. In, that, in other words, you, isn't that like uh, Roland Kirk, one of those guys you know, grunting and humming? That's what you yeah, do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Or, or, or Errol Garner. Yeah. Or, or you know. Yeah. And, and, and basically, like, outside now, essentially, I, I, cre- I, can, I created the whole melody, okay? Yeah. Basically, he just gave me the words. Right. He says, he says make, do... The melody, whatever, whatever, it's in this key, okay, and it's in this time signature. But here's here's a few here's a few words to work with. Here's 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 like about a, to four chunks of uh well, of these executives fluked the fuck out of me, and it's been a long time to, to go, you know, blah blah blah. And then after that, basically he gave me those, but he says, well, there is no melody. You do it, okay? Right. You do the melody. Sell that tune, so that became that became our operating. Whenever I, whenever it was time to record an album, basically that sell that tune became my operational uh, my operational instructions. Okay, let me re- interject here. Remember at the beginning of the the deal for opera, he says it starts off with a few ingredients or a few things. Right. That's what he did the same right. thing with exactly. you. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. A few ingredients. Yeah. You know, yeah. then that's all it takes. That's all it takes because then interaction. Yeah. Starts and begins to occur from there based on each individual member's interpretation, based on those few ingredients. Based on those few ingredients at the beginning, which really now thinking about it, it's really even the even the beginning isn't the beginning. It's just picking up at a certain at a certain place in as a result of uh, in terms of tactility. Yes. Oh, I see. It's picking up at a certain place coming from. Uh, 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 the proportions that re- whatever's going on in that day determines the proportions day. and the context that, that will change the that, next day. At the, that day, at that time, at that, in that particular decade, at that particular right. year. Now, now listen. Oh, this. Now, wow. Yeah. Now, what does it sound like? This is a way a guerrilla group or a terrorist cell would do it. They, of they, course. You know. So Frank. Now here's the metaphor. He knows that the the real. Um, uh, control is not the Vietnam War or whatever's going on to bomb some oh, third God, world no. country. The control no, is God, right no. in the pop culture. And that right. Elvis is a guerrilla group or any new band, the British Invasion. That's where the warfare, the software warfare is going on. And he knows it's a war and he's treating his band as right. a war unit. Nobody else did that. And and then satirizing the process as he did it. Right. <laughs> I mean, exactly. that great opening scene, I think it's the opening scene in 200 Patels, where Bikel comes out, a military guy, with his right. steaming uh, ba- uh, briefcase, and he's going to give instructions to the Frank Zappa, Ringo Starr character. Well, what's, why? What? That's like the military guy telling you guys about the AIDS virus. You know what I mean? Right, right. So, let me just finish up the point here. So he says, um, uh, where are we? we uh, I, the rock gets extrapolated into curious realms. And then, right. the, then the guy, executive, says, you probably get into that classical rock, real intellectual with ugly chords and the beat's no good. Right. Frank says, any association we might have with, quote, serious music, unquote, has to be considered from a rock viewpoint because most of right. us are strictly rock musicians. There is also the element of humor to consider. So then right. the guy, his last comment is, you guys could never really play any good rock and roll. You're not serious enough. You couldn't even play any good serious music because you're not serious enough. Have you even considered employment? Have you ever? Have you even considered employment in another field? <laughs> right, 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 right. So Frank responds soberly, like like he is the head of the CIA, kind of just responding to this idiotic person. I would like to bring to your attention at this time one of the basic tenets of our group philosophy. Then he has in capital letters: It is, in spite of all evidence to the contrary, theoretically possible to be heavy, heavy in quotes, and still have a sense of humor. That's all capitalized. Right. We right. direct this. We direct this specifically toward people who suffer feelings of ambivalence when given an opportunity to laugh at themselves. Right. <laughs> and another precept which guides our work: somebody in that audience out there knows what we're doing, and that person right. is getting off on it beyond his or her wildest comprehensions, exactly. wildest understandings. Beyond that, beyond the wildest exactly. understandings. Exactly. That could even be about himself. 
that he's doing and it was. this. No, no, it certainly was. It yeah. Certainly was. And he has to. He's. He knows how to to watch and learn and respond to the unforeseen. Uh, you know, discomfort. They call it the the uh, uh, there was uh, the the uh, unpredictable. Oh yeah, statistical bonus. Statistical improbabilities attended there too. Like you know, bumping into Sting in the lobby and then getting him to sing uh, at, in the concert that night. You know, just things like that. Right. I know he played in seventy around this time. Uh, he brought the whole football team, the Ottawa Rough Riders, I think they were called, out on stage because he bumped into them at the airport and got them to come to the concert. Right. See, he was trying to include everybody, which is what Dio fa- finally gets to do. It includes the whole the whole globe. Wow. Wow. That is brilliant. That is absolutely fucking brilliant. Yeah. Oh my God. Okay. Let's hold on. Let me see what time it is here. God damn it! I got it. Shit. No, no, we've, we've, right, cut, we've done a good performance here. This has been good. Okay, let's all right. Let's cut it. Let's, let's stop it here. You know what? You I've know what we ought to think about. If I actually keep getting millions of dollars, maybe we should do this ourselves. Put on this whole thing. Well, you know, look, Bob, it's gonna it, it, it's gonna end up it's gonna end up being that way anyway. Yeah. You know. You know. You you know. Real. You realize we are actually going to. Uh, but we we are going to actually end up doing it ourselves. I think so. So we'll keep this. We we'll, we will keep this. Uh, we will not release this right now. What we just said, right? Or would you want to? No, 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 not yet, not yet. Yeah. We're just, we're just we're just getting we're just getting started. I, I think if if I send you a copy, if you could send it to Tommy or a couple of these guys and say, hey, join in with us and talk. Well, that, about- that's that's why I want to see guy. Uh, that's why I want you to talk to guy. Yeah. Talk to guy. All right, hold hold on a second. Somebody's beeping, and I think it's Denise. Hold on. Okay. Okay. Uh, We're just taking a break here, waiting for I to come back. But um, this is the uh, beginning of the symposium, leading to maybe a mega project. So we hope you're interested. Waiting for uh, I to come back. Matter of fact, no, no, I want to get what we say on, on recording. So, anybody who's listening, what do you think of that? Uh, I'm going to read how this uh, Warner Circular begins. We actually didn't uh, do that. He says, hi, we're the Mother's Invention, or just plain Mother's. We like to make that clear so you don't get confused with the Mother's Brothers campaign that Herbie called you guys about and said, what's the deal? To make it very plain, verging on redundant, we are not the Doobie Brothers, nor do we have any connection with Mother Earth, Cat Mother and the All Night Newsboys, and or every Mother's Son. With all the rock and roll groups you got, we can understand the sort of lonely confusion a busy executive must experience while attempting to make rational judgments about about things like good or bad taste in an ad campaign. We like you. We understand. Our group has been together since late 1964. During the past seven years, we have released ten albums. FZ has released two, and MGM Verve, that other company, has repackaged three anthologies against our wishes. Maybe you know, maybe you don't know about our plan for the release of the historic nine-disc history and collected improvisation of the mothers around Christmas or after the first of the year. Maybe if you're in the promotional areas of W.B. Kinney Entertainment Factory and heard about this unprecedented release, you might have scratched your head and mumbled to your buddies at lunch. Quote, I never heard of these guys. I'm not supposed to promote a nine-disc history album. I mean, I heard of them a little bit, but I mean, I never, I never really heard of them. I mean, so who else ever heard of them? And they should care? Some group dumping nine fucking albums during the Depression and everything? End of quote and complaint by the executive. And Frank says, maybe you talk to somebody else later at the office. Maybe you ask some more reasonable, intelligent questions. See specimen above. Maybe some of the other questions went like this. And then he proceeds to do all the stuff that I read. So, should we play some Frank music just to uh, fill it in? Let's see what we got here. iTunes is bouncing up. My 1,200 Zappa songs are, uh, are coming up in my computer. So we would... Oh. All right. 
Actually, he disconnected, so I'm going to stop the recording.